best friends, and I truly say that, that is a true statement, one of our best friends in the industry, Lori Goldspiel, the Director of Sales with Azamara Cruises. We have worked closely with Lori for close to a decade now uh, in trying to, to really get you excited about Azamara. So we'll get lead off with her, but before we do, we're really excited to have the AVP of Hotel Operations, Scott Daniels, joining us, and one of your cruise directors on Azamara, Ernest Marchain, and Ernest is live from Germany. It doesn't get any better than that. So the top of the hour, as I mentioned to him, is already tomorrow. So what commitment to Azamara we're seeing live and on display on our webinar. We'll hear from Ernest and Scott in short order, but Lori, I am so glad to have you on. Thank you for taking time out of your day and getting us excited about Azamara. Oh my gosh, thank you, Ryan. What a wonderful welcome. And I have to say, I've been in this amazing industry, I'm gonna date myself now for 35 years. And I've been with Azamara for about 10 of those. And I've been very fortunate to work with the Bon Voyage team. So we wanna thank the team at Bon Voyage and all of you for being here today to learn and explore the world with Azamara. Many of you might be aware, but many of you might not, be that we are part of Royal Caribbean Group. We are the boutique division and what we focus on is more time in port with late night stays and overnights. It truly is destination immersion. But before we begin, we want to tell you what we've been doing since the start of the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, we're still in a challenging world with COVID-19. So back in June, we created our Healthy Sale Panel of Experts. And these are leaders in science, um, hospitality, maritime operations. And this is led by Governor Mike Levitt, who is the former Secretary of Health and Human Services in the Bush administration, and Dr. Scott Gottlieb, the former commissioner of the US Food and Drug Administration. These experts are guiding us into our healthy return to service. And we presented a plan to the CDC uh, last week, actually, a little over a week ago, with 74 recommendations in these five areas. The most important thing to us is the health and safety of our guests and our onboard crew. So now we're gonna get to the fun. And I would like to introduce my friend and colleague, Scott Daniels, who is, we are so lucky to have him at Azamora. He has been with Azamora, maybe I think a little bit longer than I have since 2008. And he leads our onshore and our hotel operations, our onboard team. So we, before we get this started, what we're gonna do is, Scott is going to share a recipe and you all will get this recipe emailed to you after on one of our signature cocktails on board. So Scott, I wanna see that. I think it's called a sidecar. It is, hello, <laughs> good evening, everybody. So it might be a little early for some of you, I know, but it, it's just after six here in Miami. Um, so it's definitely cocktail time, right? Um, and I'm a hospitality guy. So, you know, we like to start things out fun and, and we, gotta, we gotta have a, a good cocktail to start out. Um, so I wanted to do a sidecar with you today. It's one of my favorites. It's a popular one on board. Uh, it's also a really simple one to make. So you can see the, the recipe up on your screen there. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Um, so we're going to get started quick and easy, right? So we start out with some cognac, ounce and a half of cognac. I'm using a jigger here to measure my shots. Um, this isn't a cocktail that really needs a jigger. You don't have to be exact. So if you get a little too much cognac or a little bit too much control, it'll be okay. You can always adjust it. So ounce and a half of cognac, and now we're going to do an ounce of control. Juice of half a lemon. So the only thing I really prepped here in advance was I, of course, washed my lemon because you always want to wash your produce before you, before you cut into it. And I have a, a glass chilling here and I have my uh, cocktail shaker ready to go. So we got our nice uh, citrus juicer here. We got a good lemon, it looks like. So juice of half a lemon. And now, while I shake this up a minute, I'm gonna put you on mute because I'm afraid the sound of the ice clanging against the shaker could be uh, horrifying through the phone. So I'll be right back.
okay. You know it's cold when, frankly, it's so cold your your hand feels like it's freezing. Always good to have a, a chilled glass to start out with. Let's see. We'll give it a shot. Should be nice, a little bit sweet. Excellent. So again, easy, simple to make. Um, it is a little bit boozy, obviously, because it's just a couple of spirits and the, the fresh lemon juice there. Um, but it goes down nice and easy, which makes it a little bit of a dangerous cocktail because you can throw one back uh, pretty quickly without realizing it. So to get us kicked off, uh, cheers, everyone. Oh, that looks amazing. Now, Scott's in his kitchen, and I'm here located in San Diego in my beautiful suite on board the Azamara Journey. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about our three beautiful ships. They're small, they're boutique, they're all identical, the Azamara Journey, the Azamara Quest, and the Azamara Pursuit. 700 guests and 408 amazing crew members that we call our onboard family. They're just amazing. And what's so wonderful about these three ships is they're never in the same area at the same time. Um, we will have an event in 2022 where the three sisters meet. So that's be, be very exciting, but our itineraries are always changing and we sail all over the world. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring Scott back. Hopefully he has made it to his deck right now. He's got his virtual background set up and we're going to just get a little background on Scott on how he wound up at Azamora in the industry and how he landed in Miami. Okay, I didn't have time to, to quick adjust my camera. Sorry, give me just a second there. <laughs> there we go, that, that'll have to do. <laughs> All right, sorry. So ask me one more time. <laughs> oh, so Scott, how did you wind up at Azamara and how much time did you spend on board? Um, so I, I'd worked uh, about 10 years in the hotel industry, uh, but I had always wanted to work on ships. So back in uh, 2005, uh, I left hotels. Um, I worked for a couple of small lines, uh, started out on some really small expedition ships. And then in 2008, I, I was fortunate enough to, to join the Azamara team. Um, the brand was just a little over a year old. Uh, I was on board for the Quest one year anniversary, um, which is pretty fun. Um, and I stayed on board for four years. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, and, and truly the only reason I left is because I got married and decided I actually wanted to see my wife every day instead of only four months out of the year. Um, so I, I came shoreside back in 2012 for what was supposed to be uh, a temporary, I think eight or nine month ship to shore contract. Um, and now here we are a, a few years later and I'm still here, but uh, well, very happy to be here and, and great that I still get to spend so much time on board and dealing with the onboard team. Well, what has been great is I started in 2008 and just to see how the brand has evolved and you have brought so many special things to the brand on board. And one of my favorite events is one of our signature events. It's called Evenings Under the Stars. Can you give us a little background on that event um, and what goes on behind the scenes to prepare? Yeah, so this is something that we, we've really grown over the years. Um, I think we started it maybe in 2009. Uh, it, it didn't look like that when we first started it, um, but it's really become a signature event for us now. Um, you can probably tell looking at the, the pool deck, that's not what it looks like on a normal day. So when we're doing this party, uh, it, it is a lot of work for the onboard team, to be honest. So in the afternoon, they'll clear away all of the, the sun loungers and the, the tables. They'll set up uh, a really big buffet um, set up tables and chairs all over the deck. Um, fortunately, if, if we're, the weather's right and we don't have too much wind, we'll even set up chairs all around the running track up on deck 10. Uh, and, and it's really just a big party. So we, we have the buffet starting at six o'clock. We'll start out with some, maybe some little lighter music, one of our uh, solo piano players or a singer. Um, and then around eight o'clock, we have the cruise director, our production cast, 
the band, the trio, everybody gets up there uh, and puts on a great show that usually is a good 90 minutes to two hours long. Um, good mix of music. Maybe Ernest will talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but you can see everybody's out there dancing, having a good time. Um, I, I love the photo in the middle. That's Richard, uh, one of our hotel directors, who's been with us almost since day one. Uh, he loves to make a uh, Kep Suzette for the event. Um, he probably puts way more uh, orange liqueur in there than he should, um, but it's, it's just a great night. Um, I think you, you can see people really enjoy it. Um, I used to love when I was a hotel director on board, you know, after I would spend a, a while just going around and talking to everybody and kind of hopping table to table um, to be able to, to kind of stand in the back and just look out and, and see people really enjoying themselves. Um, it was just a great moment, and, and it's something that we do every voyage uh, at least once, and sometimes depending on the length of the voyage, we'll, we'll try to do two of them, actually. Yeah, it is so well received by our guests, and it's definitely one of my favorite events. And I love our onboard team. They're amazing. I've been on, gosh, about 140 cruises. It helps when you've been in the industry for so long, but I've never met such a warm, friendly, and just amazing team before. How do we find them? And they're always so happy. They really are. Um, yeah, this is, this is a great shot. Um, captains across the top, hotel directors, and then, and then cruise directors. Um, again, when, when I worked on board, it was funny. People would always ask, like, what do you guys do? Do you put something in the water? Like, the crew, they seem like they're actually happy and smiley. Um, and I would say, honestly, like, you you can't force that on people, right? Um, you can tell people that they need to smile all the time and that they need to say hello to people and good morning. Um, but I don't think that lasts very long. I, I think that that shows after a while when when somebody is, is smiley and asking about your day because they were told they need to because it's their job versus people who, who have a bit of a hospitality personality and they're genuine. Um, and when you work on board for months and months at a time, um, and most of our crew work six months at a time, you've got to enjoy what you're doing and you've got to want to be there. Uh, because when you're there, not only for that period of time and away from your friends and your family for so long, but your, your work colleagues are also who you get to socialize with because you work and you live in the same place. Um, you really do have to enjoy it. Um, you know, I'm from Chicago originally, not a lot of people from Chicago working on ships and people would all, always ask me like, why, how do you do this? Um, and I said, honestly, I, I love it. You know, I, I wouldn't keep doing this. I worked seven years total on ships, um, if I didn't love it. So it, it's, it's really, a, a, a special environment. And it's something that I think, unless you've actually lived it, it it's really hard for people to, to understand, um, What's, yeah, what's that's how we too, find people. Yeah. And Sorry. what's great too, Scott, is what gets our guests to Osamore is the destinations. And what gets guests to come back again and again, and our repeat rate is 48% and climbing, is our onboard family. So that's so wonderful. It, it, it's always about the crew. Um, we see it in, in the comments. We read every single comment that comes in from every voyage. And we just see it over and over and over again about how people love the crew. Um, I've worked on bigger ships and it's a different experience on a, on a larger ship. Um, you know, when you're talking about a, a ship that has thousands of guests and, you know, 1200 uh, crew members, I think was the largest one I worked on. Um, it's just different and that you don't know everybody. You don't have that same rapport. Um, I always felt like you see a guest once and you can engage with them and you chat with them, but you probably never see them again. Um, because there's thousands of other people. Um, whereas on a smaller ship, everybody gets to know everybody. Uh, it, it's amazing. I've been off the ship for eight and a half years at this point. And it seems almost every time I go back to visit a ship, I run into a guest that I know. Uh, and often people that I recognize, sometimes I don't remember them, but they remember me. Um, and I just think it's it's amazing. But you do, you actually, you get to because you have a smaller group of people, you see people more often, you have more opportunities to talk to them. Um, yeah, it's pretty special. Um, 
But to, to answer your question about how, how we find people, um, I, I think the, the most important thing, it goes back to what I touched on before, and it's, it's about having people with a hospitality personality. Um, so I really try to focus less on, on hard skills because we can train people on skills. Um, we can train people how to make a bed perfectly and, and how to make a great cocktail and how to flip an omelet. Um, there's training for that, right? But I think if you don't have that inherent hospitality personality, we can't force that on you. You, you either have that in you or you don't. So we look for people who have that hospitality personality. So I, I would rather have someone who comes on board and who maybe isn't technically perfect in everything they do, but they're genuine, they care. They, they have an innate desire to, to please people because I think that's ultimately what the hospitality industry is all about, right? right so I that, that's say, kind of how, how we recruit. Yeah. I always say our team has a heart. Um, and speaking of hearts, Ernest, I think it's time that you turn your camera back on so we can <laughs> welcome you. From Germany, thank you for being here this evening. And I, I just had a nap. It's so late. Oh, <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm 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 one of those uh, late kind of guys anyway. Being in uh, entertainment for so many years. <laughs> oh, great. Um, the first time I met you, you were doing a show on board. I think it was on the journey. So, if you can just give us a little bit of background on how you wound up full time as the cruise director on board well, Osamara. That is a great question. So um, I had actually uh, started my career in entertainment. I've done uh, Broadway national tours and uh, I've done a show called Starlight Express for many years. So I've been in uh, the musical theater business for many, many years. And uh, when I came over uh, to Azamara, it was actually after doing Chicago the Musical on the allure of the seas with Royal Caribbean. So I was actually part of the family already. Um, I came over um, in the production shows that we used to have uh, back in the day, let's see, 2015 was my first year, so we had the older production shows, and uh, one of our uh, cruise directors, Amanda Paulson, actually was a friend of mine, and she said, hey, come over to Azamara, uh, you get to do your own show as uh, the lead, uh, the male lead singer, and, uh, and I came over, and the, the shows were fantastic, um, I did develop my own solo show, which I'd always wanted to do for many, many years, uh, and if you see in the top left there, that is actually from my uh, my solo show there, direct from Vegas. Now, I uh, grew up in Southern California, but my call I call home Vegas when I'm not here in Germany. By the way, I'm in Germany because uh, my beautiful girlfriend, Lena, actually lives here, and uh, we were fortunate enough to have a, a sweetheart visa, so I was able to come here. I got the COVID test, everything good, so that's why I'm here in Germany, but um, uh, to get back to uh, your question, yeah, I, I just kind of uh, went over, and I was in the production cast for two, uh, two contracts, and, uh, you know, Scott, it's funny, I was just listening to what Scott was saying, and uh, you know, Tony Markey, our, my cruise director there when I was on the quest and also uh, Russ Greek, who's, uh, who's uh, left the company a few years ago, but everybody knows Russ, of course, still. Um, they said, hey, you know, we think you would be great to be a cruise director. What do you think about, uh, you know, maybe doing that? And I said, actually, I've, I thought about it myself. I'd love to do it. And uh, I had a couple of meetings with Scott, actually. And um, Scott was so great and uh, was really nice to, I didn't even feel like it was an interview. I just felt like two guys kind of talking. And uh, this is when we had uh, the journey and the quest. We hadn't had the uh, pursuit yet. And he said, well, you know, Ernest, I got to be honest, you know, we have you know, all the cruise directors we need. Uh, but if something happens, of course, he knew ahead of time already that the, the dirty dog didn't tell me, but he knew ahead of time that they were already in talks to get another ship. And uh, he said, just, you know, be in touch with me uh, every month or so and let's uh, touch base. And then uh, we got that pursuit and they needed more cruise directors. And, uh, and that's when they actually, actually uh, asked me to come on board uh, in the management. So, but, but the great thing about doing that is we still get to perform. Now, I know a lot of the cruise directors on the other cruise lines and, uh, and other ships, you know, the cruise directors are kind of like an MC and they actually don't get to perform. So that was one of the most important things uh, for me was that I get to be able to perform as well. We love that. And you are such a fabulous entertainer. So if you could just uh, talk a little bit about the onboard experience and also what you do on shore with the guests and in the destination, that would be fabulous. Yeah. Uh, so my job basically is, uh, you know, as head of entertainment on the ship. So I just make sure that I do all the scheduling. 
Uh, I make sure when our cast come in that we uh, have uh, time for them to install their shows because they actually learn the shows in New York as a wonderful company called RWS that uh, produces the shows. So they come on and make sure they have enough time to go ahead and rehearse on uh, the stage in the real space they're gonna be doing the shows. Uh, we have our trio as well. Um, I make sure that I schedule them and make sure that you know uh, they're, they're working in the venues that they need to. Uh, I've got fantastic assistant cruise directors and Jeffrey Jones and Stephen Millett as well. And, uh, and they help me along with that and along with uh, you know, all the activities uh, that that's mainly their part of, uh, of the job is ma making sure that all of our uh, activities run and everything and and they're, uh, you know, tied in closely with the cast there. Um, I have my tech teams. I have my um, AV operator. I have my AV manager, sound, uh, the IT, uh, the broadcast guys, um, broadcast uh, manager and assistant. And uh, we have our activity host uh, as well that's going to be uh, coming on. Uh, with us. So I really just am in charge of making sure the whole department runs smoothly, uh, the scheduling um, and all that, and making sure, you know, that I'm out and about talking to guests. That's very important. And uh, one of the great parts of this job as well is that uh, I'm able to be around the guests so much. And as Scott touched on a little bit before was, uh, you know, when you're on the bigger ships, like I said, the allure I was on, you know, with 6,000 guests and 2,200 crew, it's really hard to build any kind of relationship. So uh, with Azamara, that's the special part. I can do my show. I can talk to them afterward. Um, we're always at the doors for any show when we have our guest entertainers come on. Uh, they, you know, we're, we're standing there at the doors to greet people. We're seeing them on their way out. Um, you know, one of the one of the great parts of my job too is getting onboard entertainment. So wherever we go, as you know, we're all about destination immersion. So uh, when we're in Japan, you see these slides right here. Um, I will actually look through uh, either our database or I will search myself for groups to come on. Now we had some traditional Japanese uh, uh, drum groups uh, that came on. Unfortunately, they're not in this picture here, but we're hugely successful. I mean, uh, the guests went absolutely wild for it. Um, they were a fantastic group. And uh, that's really one of my favorite things to do is to actually hire these groups to come on uh, and entertain because it's really, oh, this is this is one of my favorite pictures this here on the left. That's uh, um, uh, in South Africa when we had uh, these these uh, Zulu dancers that would come on and the energy that these guys have and, uh, and, these, and these ladies is unbelievable. And it really is bringing you to the destination. And that's really such an important thing. Uh, is to make sure that people get a little taste of where we are. So whether we're in Japan, uh, whether we're in South Africa, if we're you know, in Brazil, you're gonna have some uh, amazing dancers there. All over the world, no matter where we go, we have the Maoris uh, when we're in uh, New Zealand as well. Uh, so wherever we go, we always do our best to get some local talent to come on board, uh, to make sure that they're really uh, you know, showing what this place is all about. Um, this slide here, uh, it shows a little bit of uh, time that I get away when I'm not on the ship. I actually get to go off, uh, not as often as, as I would like, of course, but uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go ahead and take a few hours and take a tour. Um, the top left there, that's actually in Tanzania with our restaurant manager, Adele, one of my uh, best friends there uh, on the ship. And uh, we had a little bit of lunch and said, hey, would you guys mind taking a picture of us? Uh, we have Perry Golf. We have an amazing partnership with Perry Golf. That's the bottom left there. And uh, they actually invited me. Um, I am an avid golfer, so they invited me to come and uh, do a little golfing with them, and that was an amazing day. That was actually uh, in Oman, so I've never played golf there, but that was fantastic. Uh, the bottom one there, that's when we all went out uh, and had a little bit of a safari. Um, I can't pronounce the name of the game reserve because it's like, <laughs> and really, that's about what it's like, but I don't know how to say it properly. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some of our crew there. And as you can tell, you know, we're all having a good, well, you can't tell from Jeeva, our staff captain in the white shirt there. He's, <laughs> he's usually got a bigger smile, but uh, we get to go out. Uh, the one on the right is one of my favorites uh, because there's Gokhan and there's Carlos and of course, hotel director, Philip and I, and that's in Hobbiton uh, when we're in New Zealand. So we actually go to the site where they film, uh, you know, uh, um, the Lord of the Rings and that's uh, where the, the Hobbit village is. And, and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I've never been to a place like that. And uh, I've actually been a couple of times. So we took a little bit of time out to go and, uh, and check that out. And then the top right, that is in, um, on the way to Petra. So uh, we were in Jordan. And uh, I, I actually, next time, I think I'll have to get a picture standing in front of the treasury because that's actually one of the fantastic pictures. But I thought that was uh, kind of nice to show you uh, the vastness and, and, and you know, the desert landscape of Jordan right there. So um, I, I, I lit the center one here. This is a good buddy of mine. Uh, from Belgium, 
uh, Yan and Hildy, and and they are just some of our guests that come time and time again. I think they stayed for over a month uh, at this time, and we had a a little solar eclipse. So uh, we, you know, of course about uh, self health health and safety. Uh, so we made sure we got everybody glasses. I'm not looking up, as you can see, I'm taking the picture, but uh, everybody there on deck had a great time. And, uh, you know, we, we just, we have so much fun with the guests. I'm sure you can tell when, when you look around and, and all of our guests know, you know, when they come back, uh, they're gonna see familiar faces. And that's one of the, uh, another one of the great things uh, you know, that we look forward to when we see familiar faces coming walking up the gangway. Over here on the left, that's uh, uh, part of our evening under the stars. And that's, uh, we got some of our cast there and uh, we all dress up in white and encourage everybody to do that. If you don't have anything white to wear, don't worry, everybody's invited, but we all kind of dress up in white and it's kind of a fun party outdoors. Um, that top picture was uh, a little promotional thing we did. Um, and we took a little picture and they said, okay, we want you to jump as high as you can. And uh, I guess I got lucky because they got me at the highest peak there. So, uh, but we have uh, Captain Magnus there. We have uh, Jeevo, our staff captain, Fabio, our food and beverage, and Philip again right there. So uh, yeah, you can tell we actually have no fun whatsoever uh, on board the ship. Uh, down below, we had our, uh, what used to be Le Club Voyage, and now it has changed um, uh, to our, our new loyalty program. Uh, and I think, uh, Lori, you'll have to help me. I think it's program. Program. Asimar Circle, that's what it is, yeah. Um, I, I've been off work for a couple of months, so I wasn't quite sure. Um, and then uh, down there on the bottom, uh, there's Captain Magnus and Philip again. And uh, yeah, we just, you know, to touch on what Scott said as well, uh, you know, the culture on these ships and, and, and not just the Quest, but I know all the other ships as well. You know, we all really enjoy working with each other. Uh, there are smiles uh, in the morning. Good morning, how are you? Uh, you know, you take a little bit of time uh, no matter who it is, what department you're in, it is a very, very close-knit family. And that is one of the really special things um, with Azamara. And one of the things I'm most proud of as well is that uh, we're all very close and uh, we do enjoy each other and, and, and have a good time. Uh, we do our, uh, on our longer cruises, there's my assistant cruise director top left there, um, Jeffrey Jones, and we do uh, progressive trivia. So this is something we do on our longer cruises and we'll have um, maybe 10 sessions of trivia. And then with our champions, we take a nice picture with them. They're given the we're number one sign right there. Uh, down there at the bottom, this is out and about with uh, uh, Tom and Gwen and uh, some of our fantastic guests. they are uh, been with us, oh boy, even longer than I've been with Azamara, they've been uh, with us. So they're fantastic. Uh, and this this young lady here on the right as well. So uh, we do like to take, uh, boy, I can't imagine how many thousands of pictures I've taken with our guests, but I, uh, as you can tell, I, I, since I gave you these, I tend to save them as well. It's always a good little keepsake to have that. Uh, there's Tom Sklar and his lovely wife and Janessa down there on the bottom uh, at our uh, evening under the stars. Uh, and there's Teresa, we were in Hubbard Glacier right there, uh, top right. And uh, this couple right here on the bottom right, um, they're actually, uh, this is the first time I sailed with them, but uh, one of our cruise directors, as I said, Russ Grieve, uh, who left the country, they were huge friends with him. And I and they asked where he was. And I said, well, unfortunately, he left the company, but, you know, let's take a picture and I'll send it to him. So uh, I do that quite often as well. So, uh, yeah, w you know, I'm looking at these pictures and it takes me back. And, you know, it looks like I have no fun with my job whatsoever. I think I need to start looking for another job. <laughs> Oh my God, I, I, lo I love that you remember everybody's name. It's fantastic. So, you know, you. we try, we, we, we do. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll say, oh my gosh, who was that? And if, if I lean over and ask Philip or to Fabio, I say, okay, what was her name? And then we remind each other. Um, but we are very, very good uh, at uh, remembering people's names and, and the special memories that we make. Because uh, as I said, you know, time and time again, you know, our, our, our return, you know, cruisers is, off the charts, sometimes it's over 50% of the ship is people who stayed with Azamara before. So, uh, you know, they really do become uh, part of the family as well. So uh, another great, uh, great part of being Azamara. Yeah, the way it's, it's great too, when we look at our brand and thank you both for being with us today and this evening to talk about the onboard experience and our crew, because it's all about the memories that we create and the friends and the bonding. So now we're going to move the program along a little bit, and I get to talk about the fun, amazing destinations that we sail to and talk about why Azamara. So Azamara really is a special boutique brand. 
And we're all about connecting people to people, people to cultures. Trying to figure out my uh, video here, sorry. Um, people with themselves by spending more time in port. About 80% of our time is spent in port. We have late night stays and overnights. Many of our itineraries are two to three nights in a destination. A late night stay means past 8 p.m. That allows the opportunity for night touring and night exploring. We focus on country intensive voyages. So you can do back to back cruises. You can do 157 days and not even repeat a, a port, which is fantastic too. We are currently open through 2023, which is fabulous. So that helps with your planning. And since we are a boutique cruise brand, we're also a more inclusive cruise brand where we include gratuities, we include complimentary bottled water, specialty coffees, teas, boutique wines from around the world, spirits, shuttle service to and from port communities, and so much more. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about our late night stays and our docking spots. So in this slide, I love it. When we look at this picture, when we sail into Bordeaux, we sail up the river and we stay for two or three days depending upon the tide, which gives our guests an opportunity to travel further out of the city and spend time in the vineyards of St. Emilion the most fabulous wines in the world. Who doesn't love wine? Rio, and that's the picture towards the left on the bottom. I was in Rio last November and it was fantastic. It was my first time in South America and I loved it, but I've never been in Rio on New Year's where there are over 3 million revelers dressed in white on Copacabana Beach. And we have a prime spot floating freely a mile or so out where you can watch the 20 minute firework display. Now that's a wow. The picture in the right is Venice. Venice is an undoubted jewel in the Mediterranean, but most ships arrive at eight and leave at five. We shy away from the main docking area and we dock in St. Basilio, which is walking distance from St. Mark's Square and we stay overnight in most ports. Many of our itineraries in Venice, we will be there for two to three nights. So our traveler, our traveler, also more, we serve the high-end cruise market, attracting interesting travelers from all over the world. Empty nesters with an explorer mindset. They're a cultured group that is motivated by enriching their life experience and they seek adventure. We tend to be a little bit younger. Our average age is about 64. 40% of our guests are from the US and Canada, 40% from Europe and 20% from other countries. It makes for a truly international feel on board and that's what travel is all about. I love meeting people from all over the world. So with our focus on country intensive itineraries and looking at our lineup for itineraries through 2023, it really helps me look at what's on my bucket list and where do I wanna go. We do Israel, we do Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, Japan, France, South Africa, Spain, Italy. And we recently just announced our new Greece itineraries. And I love these itineraries. They start on the Azamar Pursuit. I love the pursuit. I love all of our babies. May 9th through June 6th of 2021. Six to seven nights, six to seven ports, four late night stays. So we go round trip Athens, which allows you the opportunity to do a pre or a post. And then we go to the marquee ports such as Mykonos, we're there until 10 p.m. Kusadasi, where you get to explore Ephesus until 10 p.m. Patmos, Greece, Rhodes, Santorini, and look at the amount of time we're in there in the evening. I have been to Greece six times and boy, June 13th, my birthday cruise. Who wants to join me next year? Scott and Ernest, I know you guys want to join me. Um, now we're going to talk about some of another favorite area of the world that I love to go to. And these are Bordeaux turnaround itineraries where we have a France intensive Southampton to Bordeaux, which is fantastic. 
and we have an overnight in Paris, get to go to Normandy, St. Malo, Nantes, and an overnight ending in Bordeaux, where then if you'd like, you can do a back-to-back -back and you can do our Spain intensive itinerary. I was in Spain last May and it was fabulous. So you'll go from Bordeaux to Bibla, Gijon, Vigo, Lisbon. I love Lisbon in Portugal. You need a day at sea and then you're gonna overnight in Seville, go to Cadiz, Granada, Cartagena, Valencia, and then you'll wind up back in Barcelona. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have a lot of our guests that are repeat and they do back-to-back -back voyages. The nice thing is, I forgot to mention, we include self-serve laundry, so it's great. You can pack light and it's also country club casual on board. We have an amazing partnership with Perry Golf and we've had a partnership with them for over eight years. We offer golf um, in 23 countries and Perry Golf takes care of it all. What I love about this itinerary is we sail out of Copenhagen, you're in Berlin, you have a day of cruising where you can relax and enjoy the beautiful ship. On this itinerary, with the package with Perry Golf, it's six rounds of golf, which is fantastic. And when you look at St. Petersburg here, we're there for two nights, three days. Larger ships are docked out of town. We sail right up the river and we are just a few hundred meters from the Beak Hermitage. This is a fabulous itinerary for July 11th of 2021. We recently added some Caribbean itineraries for those that wanna be a little bit closer to home. And what I love about these itineraries, who wants to cook or clean over Thanksgiving? Wonderful, sail on the beautiful Azamara Quest. And we go to those small boutique islands in the Caribbean, St. Kitts, St. Thomas, Haiti, Key West is wonderful, Barbados I love, St. Martin. So round trip Miami, those are some of our amazing itineraries, 15 nights, rest, relaxation, 10 ports and three late night stays. So as you can see, when you're on Azamara, you're doing a lot of exploring during the day and sometimes in the evening. What's great is then you can come back in to your beautiful hotel. This area is deck four, where guest relations is, where also you can buy your land excursions. And then you go up the stairs and you go to one of my favorite areas, Mosaic Cafe, where in the morning, I will have my non-fat latte. And by day two, they know Miss Lori wants a non-fat latte with two Splendas. And I could grab a little snack and then go out and explore. We have trivia over here, and it's a great way to come back in the afternoon, have a cup of tea, glass of wine, and meet up with friends. Now we have many restaurants on board. We have five different restaurants, and two of our restaurants are specialty restaurants. If you're in a suite, it's an included. If you're not in a suite, it's a $30 cover charge. Prime C is our steak and seafood restaurant, and it's fabulous. Everything is cooked to order, and you can make a reservation once you're on board. Our other specialty restaurant is Aquilina. I love Aquilina. It's a flair of Italian and Scott is always working with Chef Robert to modify and add some excitement to our menus and bring in local cuisine too. And then we have our fantastic living room. The living room is located on deck 10, and I love the living room. It's a great gathering spot, and look at that view. The view of the destinations of where you are, and every afternoon from four to seven, we have wine and tapas. In the evening, we have dancing. It's just a lot of fun and a great gathering spot. Now we're gonna to get to my favorite place, the staterooms. Now, Scott always laughs, because I always tell him how much I love the beds on board. So I think one of these days, maybe on my 15 year anniversary, I'm going to get a mattress sent to my home. We have great bedding, our accommodations are wonderful. And the average size of one of the veranda staterooms, they're about 185 square feet, not including the veranda and they're beautiful. And then we have our suite categories. We have 34 Club Continent suites. Once you're in the suite category, you have a butler to take care of all of your needs and you have some other 
and many such as internet, specialty dining again is included, and it's just wonderful accommodations. Half of the Club Continent suites have walk-in showers and half of them have a bathtub. Okay, now we're really getting to my favorite, the Club Spa suites. There are only two and they sell out very quickly. And you can see the sunken bathtub, rain shower, and this is right into the entryway, private entry, right into the salon and spa and the fitness center. We have amazing food on board, so we're active in port, but we also have a great gym and spa to add to that. So in short, why Azamora? Longer stays, more overnights, night touring, and destination immersion on your boutique hotel at sea with an amazing onboard team. Now we went through a lot, so we wanna talk about our program that we have that is called Cruise with Confidence. We're in an uncertain wor world right now, but we need to think about our future and where we're traveling to, and we want you to feel confident in what you're booking. So you have until November 30th, when you pick an itinerary for Q2 of 2021 on forward to 2023, because we're open through the spring of 23 right now, you have up to 48 hours prior to change your mind. What that means is if the price goes down, we will look at honoring it. If it's outside of final payment, we will refund the difference. If it's within final payment, you would receive an onboard credit. If you change your mind for something in 2021 and you wanna move it to 2022, we have what we call lift and shift. If you wanted to cancel and get a 100% future cruise credit, you can do that too. So we have Royal Caribbean Corporation has Cruise with Confidence. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about an exciting offer that we have. Ryan mentioned that in the beginning. We have our double upgrade offer. It's our best offer of the year. You book it inside. I didn't even show you all a picture of one of our inside staterooms and you're upgraded to a veranda. You book a veranda and you're upgraded to a suite. It's on select voyages through 2022. And this offer started in September and it runs through mid-November. In addition for attending tonight's event, you also would receive an onboard credit. Now I mentioned we're more inclusive. So what can you use the onboard credit? You can use the onboard credit for the spa. We have gift shops on board, or you could use it for excursions. And we are going to recommend that you do our excursions in 2021. So this is for new bookings made by October 22nd. And now I think we're gonna bring everybody back on with the cameras so we can answer any question. Excellent job. Uh, loved hearing uh, the different personalities. We've done many of these over the last, uh, not only a few months, but we've had a number of in-person uh, experiences. And so I definitely, want to make sure that I highlight a couple of things. I've heard many onboard speakers talk about their crew and, and we do, we love our team. Ernest and Scott, you guys just absolutely exemplified by knowing the names and the stories and the people uh, that have sailed with you as coworkers, uh, that have sailed with you as guests. Uh, that to me is speaks so much more volumes about what the experience on board an Azamara ship is all about versus just showing me a great picture of a ship and saying, you're going to love it. So I, I, I really appreciate the two of you guys coming on and, and sharing those personal stories for us. Uh, if I was somebody who was ready to book, Lori, what's the right time to book? Should I kind of wait because you never know what deal may come about or, you know, there's gotta be plenty of, of space on the ships or should I book sooner than later? Shame, shameless plug, insert here. That's such a great question. You know, when um, the pandemic started, people weren't booking, but starting in late April, we really started the dreaming and talking about the destinations that Azamara travels to. And when we look at our inventory for 2021, and we just opened up 2022 and 23, two weeks ago, it is booking 
very well because there's spiked up demand. People want to travel. I know I've been home now for seven months and I'm going a little bit stir crazy. I can't wait to visit Ernest in Germany, go somewhere. So you want to book now. You want to book now to get the best accommodations, the best pricing. We have cruise with confidence so you can feel confident. And if the price went down, we would look at protecting you. But it's going up. You bet. Uh, I want to highlight a couple other things that when, when I think about Azamara, and uh, I've had the opportunity to, to be on ship uh, with Azamara. I've done a, a ship inspection in, in Southern California, uh, and I've been on many other cruise lines. When I think of uh, what is a great experience for a cruiser, uh, less people is better. So the small ship environment that Azamar presents, what does that mean to you? That means less hectic, uh, less crazy. There's more crew to take care of me. And uh, my wife loves that. That's what she would say. She wants as many people there to pamper her as possible. And that's what you're going to get when you're on an Azamara ship. But I also think of the, the exact experience. And maybe, Ernest, you see this every day as a cruise director. Uh, so maybe you could speak a little more to the point of, I hate running back to the ship at 3.30 because I've got to make that time at four o'clock because boy, they're leaving the dock. And if I don't get there, oh, but I want that last little gelato or I want to get that last piece of, uh, of, of souvenir for my family. Can you talk about what truly it means, the longer stays, how that impacts your experience? Uh, absolutely. I mean, that, that's one of the, uh, the most beautiful things uh, of what we do is we have longer stays and, and more overnights than any other uh, line in the, in the industry. And uh, it does, it gives you time. Uh, you know, even when I was uh, working for Azamara, you know, I had been, as I said a couple of times on the Allure of the Seas, you get in at eight, you're leaving at four, you got to make sure you're on at three or three thirty. I mean, you know, that doesn't give you a whole lot of time. You can go and have lunch. That's great. But then I came to Azamara, went back to St. Martin, and we were there till 11 p.m. And I'll tell you, uh, it's so wonderful to uh, hear the, the whistles from the other ships and see all the droves of people going to those huge ships. And you're just kind of kicking back and having a cocktail or, you know, enjoying the water as well. Uh, you know, so no matter where you are, you know, when we're in uh, Bordeaux and we have the overnights in Barcelona and St. Petersburg and all these amazing places, you know, uh, there's nothing like just, I think you, you feel a lot more chilled, if I can say that. You're just more relaxed. You, you don't think like, okay, we're on a schedule. We really got to go. We got to see this. We got to see that. So it really does uh, lend itself to having a, a more calm experience, uh, a more enriching experience, and, and really being able to, to take in the sights and the destination that you've uh, you booked. There's a reason you booked it because you wanted to see the places. So I think that is uh, uh, it's a great point to, uh, to bring up and, and and that's exactly, uh, you know, one of the one of the great reasons why you want to come to Azamara. Uh, if I could just add a comment, when you do those overnights, what's wonderful is you can get up off in the morning, go for a run, come back to the ship, shower, go out on an excursion, come back, take a little rest and go back in the evening. I was on a voyage where we did a double overnight and that was just fantastic. I got to see so much and really go outside the city and explore. Excellent. Um, uh, we do have a question from one of our guests here who literally has just jumped in and I think it makes sense with the timing of our presentation today and still uh, all cruise ships are, are in dock in port right now not able to sail uh, and Douglas uh, did ask can you provide some additional insight Lori to this healthy sail panel and kind of what uh, their onboard experience might look like uh, maybe some of the differences for the traditional cruiser who knows what it's like to cruise, but now this is going to be a slightly new experience for them. What are some of the things that they can expect? Okay, so we have a lot of protocols that we're looking at um, implementing. And what I'm going to do is since this is on board and Scott is really the expert here and it's great to have him. I'm going to hand that over to Scott. I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> So uh, listen, we, we have been looking at, at everything on board. Um, absolutely, think, think some things are going to be different, right? So as Lori mentioned earlier, we, we submitted our recommendations to the CDC um, a little while ago. Uh, we're you know, still, still waiting to hear back. Um, 
However, we have tried to think of, of the entire experience from the time guests first step on board until, they tem until the time they leave. There's been a lot of discussions about the phase, right? What are those going to look like? Will they still exist? Um, for sure, they will still exist. Um, will they look different? Probably. Um, you know, everyone I think is expecting a slightly reduced capacity when we first come back. So that changes things already. I think people are expecting there to be social distancing in place that we've all gotten very used to at this point. Um, so we've had to, to go through and say for the buffet, you know, how do we want to handle this? Do we want to have people socially distance and, and maybe we're serving everybody? Do we want to have it more where we have the food set up in the buffet, but we're actually taking orders and we're bringing things to people's tables. Um, if we lose some of the seating in the venue because we have to operate at a lower capacity, like we're seeing in, in shoreside restaurants as well. Um, what other options do we have? Uh, if, if we lose a bunch of seats up in the buffet, what can we do differently in the main restaurant? What other venues that maybe don't offer any breakfast options now, could we actually offer some options? So maybe now there's different grab and go options in a place that was never really looked at as a, a breakfast venue before, for example. So on the food and beverage side alone, uh, we're looking at every venue, every meal period, we really feel like this is a great opportunity for us to look at not just the things that we may have to do uh, in this new world that we're all living in, but we feel like it's a great opportunity to really look at the whole operation and say, you know what? We think we could do this better actually. Um, and we have, we have the time right now to, to really be able to, to think through all these things. Um, similarly on the entertainment side, uh, we've had to think about, you know, same thing, reduced capacity in a venue. So if we're not able to fill our, our cabaret as we do now, um, maybe instead of two shows a night, maybe now there's three shows a day. Maybe again, we're looking at venues that haven't traditionally been entertainment venues, but maybe we can start using some of those places to, to provide more entertainment options so we can spread people around a bit more because of that reduced seating. So, uh, really, I think the, the entire experience A to Z is, is being looked at. We have a lot of plans in place. Of course, we, it, it's hard for us to talk about exactly how things are going to be until we get, our, uh, get some feedback from the CDC. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. Um, but uh, I promise you we're, we're looking at health and safety, obviously, first and foremost. Um, I think we're all on about six calls a day, just, just talking about that. Um, and, and I think everybody else knows too, things keep changing. So we're, we're trying to plan for every possible scenario, but we also understand that there are things that we're talking about today that maybe within the next few months could, could change. Yeah, well, well said. And uh, just from my perspective, not being a part of a cruise line, but obviously being part of an agency, as I look at the healthy sale panel that was put together, Lori, you mentioned the, the expertise, uh, the years of experience and the breadth and depth of the, the people that are on that panel uh, from all walks of life, starting with scientists uh, into, into the government so that they understand how these things work into hospitality. Uh, but what I love about it is this was a joint effort between two major cruise lines coming together saying what is in the best interest starting with health for the cruising of the future. And it was, let's put our competitive spirits aside. We want what's best for, for not only passengers, but crew alike to make sure that this is a healthy relaunch. So I have a lot of confidence in, in what you guys are working towards and, and how the CDC and you will work together to make this possible for you. Uh, I did have a question somebody did ask Lori and I think I know the answer, but I'd like for you to respond. Uh, if any of the destinations or ports of call that uh, are on an itinerary would require a visa or other governmental paperwork, uh, does that come with my cruise fare? Do you take care of those, uh, those visas if I buy my cruise through Azamara? Yes, many times it is covered. Um, yes. 
And if there, I do believe if there's any health requirements, that's why you talk to Bon Voyage Travel and our advisors can help uh, educate if there's any vaccinations. And I'm talking outside of the, the COVID vaccination, but other vaccinations that may be required depending on where you, you may be headed. Uh, there's two final things I wanted to talk to as we're wrapping up and I wanted to just remind everybody Lori, could you go through one more time the cruise with confidence concept? And that is so much more consumer friendly. Uh, and not to say that travel wasn't consumer friendly, but we all know when you used to book an airline ticket pre-COVID, it was like, you're done. You bought the ticket, it's yours forever. Cruising was a little bit nicer than that, but you had to pay way early. And if you needed to change last minute, it came with maybe a little more complication than it does now. So go over that cruise with confidence one last time. Well, the wonderful thing about this program is you have up until 48 hours prior for bookings made by November 30th to change your mind. Whether you want to cancel, you can cancel up to 48 hours prior or the price changes, or you wanna move your voyage to the following year and you were able to take advantage of a promotion that we're offering right now, which is our double upgrade. Plus you booked a suite and it has a $500 onboard credit. We're just lifting it and shifting it to 2022. I love that. And you're not sacrificing those special amenities that you booked under if you follow the cruise with confidence policy. And you hit, you hit the second piece, which was book now, but book through Bon Voyage because you don't just uh, get that double upgrade offer, but there's some shipboard credit that can go a long way. My wife loves spa treatments and I don't believe you cover spa treatments while on board. So we don't. And you know what? I just want to add um, just a thank you to Bon Voyage. You know, every year you have your show and I'm usually at your show and I love meeting your clients. And it is so important to book with a travel advisor. Bon Voyage is the best. Their expertise is priceless. And they are there to take care of all of your needs, especially during these unprecedented times. It's just so important to work with Bon Voyage. And Ryan, just thank you for having us today. It's been our pleasure. And we hope to see many of you on board. That is our hope. We hope we've inspired you guys to travel on an Azamara cruise. And what, as Lori mentioned, it doesn't have to be 2021. Uh, if you are more confident in booking something further out in 2022 or 2023, don't delay. Get that suite of your choice on the itinerary of your dreams. Uh, thank you again for joining us on the Bon Voyage Travel Weekly Webinar Series. Uh, on behalf of Scott Daniels, thanks, Scott, for joining us. Ernest. Go to bed. It's past one o'clock, buddy. Uh, and Lori, love you. I lo uh, hope you're enjoying the San Diego weather right now. It's quite a bit cooler than it is in Arizona. But uh, for those attendees, make sure you go back to our website, bvtravel.com. We'll be back all month, every Wednesday at three o'clock Tucson time to join you and hopefully inspire you to travel sometime soon. Thanks, Azamara. Thank you, attendees, and everybody be safe out there.